Our third speaker is Mark Kerkori, and I think he's well known to many of you. Uh, he is the executive director of the preeminent think immigration think tank in the country, the Center for Immigration Studies. Uh, Linda Chavez may disagree with my characterization. Uh, she uses the CIS reports to uh, generate heat, not light. If she would read them rather than burning them, uh, she might become better informed on the issue. Uh, I commend Mark's book, uh, The New Case Against Immigration, both legal and illegal. To me, it's a, it's a must read. It's a great book. If you really want to, if you're not that familiar with it, uh, uh, the immigration issue, I think he touches all the bases and really gives you some facts to deal with and not all of this emotion driven demagoguery that is attached to the immigration issue. Uh, and uh, he also identifies problems using uh, facts and offers real solutions. Basically, uh, his policy, and it's our policy as well, and, and answer is that it's a pro immigrant policy of low immigration. Uh, and he's, this is being formulated by one of the most knowledgeable people on immigration in the United States. So I'm very pleased that he's, he's come to speak with us today. So Mark, please. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, the report that uh, uh, Jim talked about is on our site along with the others, uh, cis.org, for anybody who's interested in uh, getting more information uh, if you don't have it in your packet or you need others. Does this come out? Yes, it does. Elisio Medina is the um, vice president of SEIU, the Service Employees International Union, and he's an honorary co-chair of the Democratic Socialists of America. And he said recently, talking about immigration, that immigrants, quote, will solidify and expand the progressive coalition for the future, unquote. In the same speech, he said, quote, that immigration, well, immigration will, quote, create a governing coalition for the long term and not just for an election cycle, unquote. This is simply confirming what um, Jim and others have been talking about. Now when you look at um, the other side, every institution on the left is for open immigration, all of them. Every journal, every think tank, every uh, elected official who's, uh, there's a handful of Democrats who really are Republicans, uh, Heath Schuler and some others, but every other elected official, um, all the party organizations, everything. It is unanimous on the left that open immigration is the only acceptable policy. Do you think they're all wrong? I mean, really, does Grover Norquist and others really think that every single institution on the left is wrong about their own self-interest? Sorry, they're not. Um, immigration isn't, I'd actually change the title a little bit of the program. Immigration isn't necessarily a defining issue for the Republican Party, because the Republican Party will continue to exist. If we continue on this path, it'll just become a rhino party that's sort of Me Too Republicanism, not just on immigration, but on everything else. Mass immigration will result in Rockefeller Republicanism being the only kind there is. But small government pro-sovereignty conservatism will be extinguished by ongoing mass immigration, at least as a viable political force that has a chance of winning. Shrinking government is impossible without uh, reducing immigration. There's two reasons for this. One of them is the simple one that um, we've all been talking about, and that is voting. Uh, Immigration imports democratic voters. I mean, there's just no way really around that. Part of it, the first reason that's true, is that it's a systemic problem. Immigrants, by definition, are outsiders. They're newcomers. They're marginal to our national life. That's just the way it is. And as um, David Frum has written, uh, quote, Democrats, by contrast, have historically tended to attract those who felt themselves in some way marginal to the American experience. Slaveholders, indebted farmers, immigrants, intellectuals, Catholics, Jews, blacks, feminists, gays, people who identify with the pluribus in the nation's motto, e pluribus unum, end quote. Now, this isn't necessarily a negative thing. This is just sort of the way it is. I mean, you need a yin and a yang. You need a centrifugal and a centripetal force. But the fact remains, systemically, literally from the beginning of the republic, Democrat, uh, immigrants have been uh, attracted to the Democratic Party and to its predecessor, the Jeffersonian Republicans. I mean, that's what the Alien and Sedition Acts were about in the 1790s. Long before the potato famine, immigrants were all Northern European Protestants. They still 
all went to the Democrat Party or the predecessor of the Democrat Party, the Jeffersonians. It's just the way it is. Now that changes over time. As immigrants and their children and grandchildren assimilate, they become more like, they, their behavior becomes more like the rest of Americans. Um, and in fact, that applies even to the small immigrant groups that are very heavily Republican, Cubans being the best example. As they've assimilated, they become more Democrat. But since the overwhelming majority of immigrants are disproportionately Democrats, over time, their voting behavior will change and become more Republican. But it's a multi-generational process. It's not something that happens quickly or easily, as Jim pointed out. But there are also aspects of today's society that additionally make immigrants much more likely to identify with the Democrats. Um, first of all, most immigrants are considered under our current race laws to be minorities. Now, it's sort of a bogus thing because most Hispanics are white and consider themselves that. Nonetheless, that's the way our racial classification system, um, thanks to uh, the Democrats, exists. Well, that means that almost all immigrants uh, are immediately able to benefit from affirmative action, from quotas, from set-asides, and what have you. And the Democrats are the party of all of that stuff. Now, this isn't to say all immigrants want that, but the fact is that it's a lot harder to get people to vote against something that's benefiting them and their kids. I mean, it's just common sense. Uh, secondly, this is something um, Robert obviously talked about and everybody writes about. Immigrants are much more poorly educated. It's just the way our immigration system works. Um, immigrants overall are something like three times likely to lack a high school degree as uh, native-born Americans. And the result of that is much more pervasive poverty. Something like 60% uh, of Hispanic immigrant families live in or near poverty. They're not paying that much in taxes. In fact, the net, they're not paying any taxes at all. So the Republican message of tax cuts is irrelevant to people who aren't paying taxes. Now, again, this is not, I'm not bad-mouthing the immigrants. It's just reality. There's no way around that. Likewise, because of this uh, higher poverty, Immigrants make much greater use of social welfare programs. 53%, this is a 2009 number, 53% of immigrant families are on welfare. That's the majority of families, immigrant-headed families that have kids at home, use at least one major welfare program. That's mainly Medicaid and, f and nutritional programs like WIC and food stamps. Well. The Democrats are the champions of those programs, Just creating them, defending them, expanding welfare. Again, how are you going to expect people to vote to cut their own welfare benefits? It's just not a natural thing that's going to happen. And the point here is not that the immigrants are ripping us off. Nobody in Michoacan, Mexico, is saying, boy, you know, I got to get to Chicago to get me some of those food stamps. I read about them. That's a really great deal. No. Immigrants are 19th century rural peasant workers coming into a 21st century knowledge-intensive high-tech economy. A hundred years ago, they were coming to a place that wasn't that different. Your grandpa from Sicily came from a place that had manure in the streets, and he came to New York, and there was manure in the streets. It just wasn't that different. The immigrants are the same. We have changed dramatically and makes the likelihood of the democratic orientation of Republican voters even more likely than it was in the past. And what about the children of immigrants, the next generation? Because a lot of the immigrants may never become citizens. They may not even be legal, but their kids born here are all US citizens. Well, we're seeing trends in the children of immigrants that make their likelihood to vote Republican or support conservative policies less likely as well. For instance, fully half, half of all children born to native-born Hispanic women the daughters and granddaughters of immigrants mainly, fully half of them are illegitimate, are born out of wedlock. 